how to get into medical school here in Australia. Now, I've gathered all the latest resources and information and talking to multiple medical students at work to give you a clear and easy to understand path to becoming a doctor here in Australia. I did not study medicine here in Australia. It's just based on my experiencing interacting with medical students here. Now, it's a journey that can seem a bit daunting, I understand, but understanding the pathway in its basic form and its requirement is the first crucial step. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do it. For ease, I'm dividing into the following chapters. Why should you become a doctor here in Australia? Two main pathways to become a doctor in Australia, admission requirements, the cost of studying medicine, scholarship and any financial assistance, internship possibilities, especially for international medical students, duration of medicine studies, visa options for international students, and finally, I'll lay out my conclusion for you to make up your own mind whether this is something that you'd be interested in. Now first, why should you become a doctor here in Australia? I often call medicine as a basic foundation degree to your path being a scientist, a teacher, an entrepreneur, or even an adventurer doing remote and outback medicine. And that too with a good sustainable career. And it's exciting, it's challenging, but it's exciting. Also, particularly in Australia, there's world-class education system like University of Melbourne, Monash, University of Sydney, UNSW. They rank amongst the top 50 universities in medicine in the world. There is a clear pathway to practice after medical school. The students can move into internships, residency programs, vocational training to become a GP. And there's a very good support structure around here during their vocational training or pre-vocational training. The degree, that is the MBBS degree, has got a global recognition. There's a good work-life balance that I always talk about. So even at an undergraduate level, I see medical students, they're quite chill, they're friendly, and they're quite optimistic about their careers. Now, especially for international students, there are multiple entry points, and I'll talk about it in a bit more detail. For example, there's an undergraduate entry, there's a postgraduate entry, there's internship opportunities which are guaranteed for international students. Journey to becoming a doctor in Australia often starts quite early, sometimes even in high school. In Australia, there are two main pathways, studying medicine, number one, as an undergraduate. A degree you can pursue directly after finishing your high school or year 12. Postgraduate medicine, a pathway that is often requires you to complete an undergraduate degree before entering the medical school. Now choosing the undergraduate path means that you are studying medicine which can save you a few years, reduce your overall university debt and allow you to start earning as a doctor a lot sooner, at least two or three years sooner. The postgraduate path on the other hand gives you time to mature. It also gives you time to travel, pursue other interests and given a broad life expectation because you know I remember when I was um, I was an undergrad student, obviously in Pakistan. After finishing my year 12, we immediately got entry in med school, six year med school, and after that licensing exam, there was never a break. It was a continuous process, but the postgraduate degree helps you relax a little bit for a couple of years before you commit yourself to the medicine. One of the best parts of postgraduate medicine is also incredible variety of background students that you will come and work with. You'll meet classmates who have previously studied engineering, business, technology. I remember when I was working as an emergency registrar at St. George Hospital, there was an anesthetic trainee who was a rocket scientist. For undergrad medicines, universities mainly assess three main things. Your 8R score, your Australian tertiary admission ranking that is, a percentile score comparing your final year high school results to others in your state across Australia. To be competitive, aim for ATR of 98 to 99. That's incredibly high, but that's how it looks like for undergrad students who want to gain entry into University of Sydney University. University might also require specific subjects like chemistry, biology, and advanced mathematics or English. Number two, UCAT store. The Undergraduate Clinical Aptitude Test. It is a computer-based two-hour exam with 233 multiple choice questions and to be competitive, aim for 90th percentile or above in UCAT. Then the third stage is the final interview stage. If your ATAR and UCAT scores are strong, you will likely be invited for an interview, which is a final step before you've been offered a position in the preferred university. The universities weigh these factors differently. Some may focus more on ATAR, others may focus more on UCAT, and some may not even require interviews. For postgraduate medicine, you will be assessed on three main factors. The GPA, which is a great point average, Universities usually use the most recent of the three years of undergraduate study. 
with heavier weightage on your final years. A GPA of at least five on a seven point scale is needed, but much higher is obviously better. Number two, your GAMSAT scores. is much harder than the UCAT or ISAT. If it is the test which basically tests the science, knowledge, biology, chemistry, physics, reasoning, and essay writing, aim for 75th percentile or above for the competitiveness. There are two sittings each year, March and September. Number three, obviously the interview. As with undergraduate programs, interviews play a crucial role. And it's more about a reflective learning about your engagement, about your empathy, about your communication, about how you're different apart from your credentials on paper and your qualifications and your excellent scores. Most postgraduate medical schools use centralized GEMSAS system, allowing you to apply for multiple universities at once. However, universities like University of Sydney, Flinders University handle their own admission. So check their specific processes. Some universities such as University of Notre Dame in Australia and University of Wollongong also ask for portfolio to highlight your volunteer work, you know, different life experiences, maybe some leadership skills. You start building this portfolio early if you are obviously targeting these particular universities. If you're an international student, the application process includes additional steps. Your academic performance must meet the Australian standards like ATAR or GPA equivalent. You may need to take UCAT, ISAT, CAMSAT or MCAT depending on the pathway and which university that you're choosing. You also need IELTS or English test if the English is not your first language. ISAT or International Student Admission Test is a three-hour multiple choice test. Uh, some universities require ISAT, others require UCAT, and some accept either or both. Higher scores, of course, increase your chances. International students usually apply directly to the university or if attending the high school in Australia through tertiary admission centers like QTAC, VTAC, or UAC. Each university's requirement can vary, so make sure that you do your research properly and diligently. Now, duration of medical studies. Here's a quick reminder that undergraduate medicine is about five to six years. Postgraduate medicine is short enough, so it might be three years plus a fourth year medical degree. Now, the cost of studying medicine, that's a big question. Based on which university and which city or state that you're living in, obviously, we've all heard about cost of living has increased dramatically in the last few years. For domestic student in Commonwealth Supported Place or CSP, fees are partially subsidized by the government. You will be typically paying between 11,000 to up to 12,000 per year under HEX or HELP loans. Full fee domestic student can expect to pay around 70 to $80,000 per year. For international student, the tuition fee can be significantly higher. Expect to pay between 70,000 to up to 100,000 per year, depending on the university. Over five or six years, the total cost for international student could look like between 400,000 to up to 600,000. And that's just the tuition fee, accommodation, food. That can cost an additional 25 to $35,000 per year, depending on the city, as I said before. What about the scholarships, HEX and HELP and financial assistance? Now, domestic students may access HEX or HELP loans, which are the loans granted by the government to study in university, while universities offer also some scholarship based on merit or financial need. International students also have limited scholarship options, but they are available. So please do do your research, and if you qualify them, to apply for them early on. Now, there's no point in doing the medicine degree or qualification if you cannot do the internship because internship is practically a part of your medical degree. Medical students are, when they qualify as doctor, they are given a provisional registration during which they do the internship followed by a journal registration after which they can apply for proper residency or vocational training programs. Can an international medical student also do internship? The short answer is yes. Priority is usually number one, Australian citizen and permanent residence, New Zealand citizen, and then international graduates of Australian medical schools. Internship salary is about 70 to $80,000 per annum, depending on the state. Now, be flexible about your location and applications to maximize your chance of getting a successful internship. If you are an international student aiming to study medicine here in Australia, you will need to apply for a student visa. Most of the time is subclass 500. The three requirements of which are to have an offer letter from an accepting Australian university, proof of sufficient funds 
for tuition and living expenses and overseas student health cover. You also need to display the proof of English language proficiency, usually IELTS or TOEFL. And the student's visa also allows you to work for up to 48 hours per fortnight during the semester time or full time during the semester breaks. This can help offset some of the living cost, but realistically part time work won't be enough to cover the hefty tuition fee. Make sure you apply for your visa as early as possible because processing time can vary from one month to up to several months depending on the case. So at the end, I'd like to conclude by saying getting into medicine in Australia takes hard work, smart planning, which is to my surprise is a thing. You need to plan every step of the way in terms of exam preparation, in terms of selection university, in terms of accepting the final offer. And then above all persistent, you will need a strong academic scores solid performance in admission test and good interview skills. And for international students, careful visa and financial planning. Do not get discouraged if you don't succeed the first time. There are many options as post-cat entry, as I've already mentioned. Stay persistent, stay focused, and stay positive. If you find this video useful, please subscribe and like our channel. I'll catch you up in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.